What up guys, Kosha Tech here. So today we got a little PC build time. So this is what I'm gonna call the open box hustle. So what this basically means is most of these parts you see here, they're either refurbished or they're open box. So a buddy of mine asked for a PC build. He didn't wanna spend a lot. So we headed to Micro Center and we piled up some good stuff. So welcome to the open box hustle. All right. So straight off the bat, we are doing an AMD build. We got an AMD Ryzen 1600X. He wanted this. We wanted to spend less than within the $1,200 budget. So, you know, the parts here, they're all basically within that budget. Now we went with the AMD build. He wanted a six core processor. We were thinking more of the uh, 7700K in the Intel side, but for the price point, it was on sale. Again, guys, open box hustle, budget build. It was on sale. We got it in Micro Center for 180 bucks. So that's already a steal. Now I wish it was used, so we're gonna knock down the price a little more, but unfortunately it wasn't. So here we're gonna basically go through essentially the whole build guide on how to build a PC. So as I mentioned, we went with the Ryzen. R5 1600X 6 core 12 thread CPU. We also went with the ASRock Tai Chi X370 motherboard. Now, again, this is an open box product. This is actually one of the most open box products we got here. It was open box for 150 with their motherboard CPU combo. We knocked it down 30 bucks. So we got it for 120, around 120, 122. Good motherboard, there's no issues inside. I'm gonna open it and show you guys. With power supply. Now, this was a really good steal. We got this for 85 bucks. It's the RM750X Corsair. Really good, uh, 80 plus gold certified. Uh, really, really good power supply for 85 bucks. Really happy for that. We went with storage and 850 Evo, 250 gigs. We got this for, I believe, 80 bucks. It says here $9.99, but we got it for 80 bucks. Now for RAM, we went with Kingston HyperX 2400 DDR, uh, DDR4 RAM um, for RAMs, excuse me, for memory. I keep on saying RAMs. For memory, eight gig kit. We didn't want to spend that much. We got it for a hundred bucks. Not bad. And also matches the white and the, the, you know, he was trying to go with the more of the, the white and black scheme. So this is a little white and black memory i'm gonna try to of course to overclock this as well um and of course we went with the geforce gtx 1060 strix edition this is the overclocked version it's a six gigabyte version as well so this should be this should be fun you know he's more into the PUBG aspect nothing you know and, and rainbow six Siege. so he really wants to play this and you know I, I did tell him on a 1080p monitor this is going to be more than suffice and cooling this is the Corsair 100i V2. It's a 240 mil rad with uh, dual 120 mil fans. So this is a really good a uh, AIO cooler. Now we wanted to do the whole AIO. We don't want to do more of the, um, the actual fan cool coolers. We wanted more of the AIO. Something, you know, something more than sufficient enough to cool the 1600X because we're gonna try to overclock it to four gigs. Hopefully it's gonna overclock to four gigs. Most likely probably 3.8 as my other build also did this uh, CPU for 3.8 gigs. And of course, holding it all down is the Corsair 570X case. It's all tempered glass. I love this case. Uh, I did a build video on this case. I'll throw a link up, up top. But yeah, so holding everything down is the 570X all tempered glass, beautiful case. And now we did, totally forgot now, so we did manage to get the case for a hundred bucks. It was open box. The original price of the 570X was 170. We got it for a hundred bucks, which was an ultimate hustle. This was good savings guys. You know, if you, if you are, if you are new to building PCs, you know, it's up to you. Either you want to go all brand new parts or you want to do a little bit of open box hustle, get some stuff, you know, knock down the price. At the end of the day, keep in mind that all of these parts are still under manufacturer warranty as well. Also, you have, I believe with Micro Center, I believe you have 15 or 30 days to still return the products regardless. So, you know, if something doesn't work, you could always return it. It's not like if you buy it and you're screwed. But that's that. Uh, the power supply, I already mentioned. I already mentioned everything. Let's get to the build. 
All right, so the motherboard is out of the box. You could see that there's no issues actually like physical, physical damage. Everything looks good. Before buying it, my suggestion is always to inspect it, open it out of the box since it's open box. You already... So once the product is open box, the retail stores let you uh, open the product out of the box. So just open it, look at it. Dim slots, everything looks good. No issues, everything looks ni nice and tidy. The pin comes in and comes out. There's tension, which is a plus. So basically, there's no issues with it. So now let's install the CPU. So once you take the CPU out, make sure you hold it on the sides. Don't hold it inside here on the gold inside plate because you're gonna bend the pins. If you bend the pins, you're screwed. There's a way to unbend them, but you don't wanna do that. So once, once you hold the CPU, just make sure you let go of the retention. And then you're gonna see a little gold plate, little gold arrow here. And you're gonna see a small, tiny arrow for some reason should have a, maybe a red indicator right over here. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is align them. So you just wanna put this in gently. Voila, it's snapped in. You just wanna shake a little bit, make sure it's in. It's in and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just hold down the retention and that's it. And that is it, your CPU is installed. Once the CPU installed, you can take a nice deep breath. You're almost there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install RAM. Now with RAM, you guys could see that there is a little, little cutout here with a little tooth. This little cutout is gonna go into this little plastic inside the RAM. There's a little plastic indicator and then they're both gonna snap on. So you're gonna know the right way to do it. Before that, you're gonna wanna unlock this and you're gonna put in the RAM. Now apply a little bit of pressure, don't be scared, and that's it. It's snapped in already. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another stick and we're gonna put it in as well. Now keep in mind, read the manual to see exactly which sticks are for the amount of RAM you're putting in. So if you're putting in four gigs, it's gonna tell you to use a specific slot. If you're, gonna, if you're putting in eight gigs, 16 gigs or 32 gigs it's going to tell you as well to which ram slot is compatible so here since we're using eight i am putting this on this one see teeth were aligned wrong in pressure snap snap we are good to go for installing the aio you're going to want to remove the stock holes here for the stock heatsink, you're gonna wanna remove them first, and then to install the right bracket for your AIO, all in one cooler. So we're gonna move them. So now you want to take the screws that came with your AIO and you're going to want to screw it into the into the back plate. Now I already screwed in one because my back plate kept on falling off. That's not a big deal. So now let's just screw in three more. So once the standoffs are installed, now you just want to add a small batch of thermal paste onto the CPU. Now honestly, don't OD on it guys, just a small batch, just a line usually. That's it. Get it on the CPU. Now the AIOs all do come with pre-installed thermal paste. However, I prefer to use my own, so I just wipe it off and throw my own thermal paste on the CPU. So once the thermal paste is installed, let's install the cooler. Now let's line up the cooler into the sockets. All right, all right, it is nice and set. Now we just gotta screw in the retention screws.
What's good guys? So I finally managed to build it. You can see behind me, it's just a beautiful, beautiful system in a beautiful, beautiful case. Now the Corsair 570X is probably my favorite tempered glass case. You can see the, we went with a more of a black and white theme. It looks great with the white LEDs and the white motherboard and just the whole black and white design. Uh, I hope he's going to be happy. Rafi, I know if you're watching this, I hope you're going to be happy. It looks great. Because <laughs> I know this, you're going to watch it like this. Then I'm going to give you the PC. Oh, man, it should be pretty funny. But I hope I did a good job building it. I hope you're going to enjoy it, brother. I did manage to overclock it to 3.9 gigs at 1.4 volts. For some reason, I couldn't go lower than that. It wasn't stable. I did manage to overclock the Strix cards. Guys, keep in mind, those Strix cards are already heavy overclock. Once you already buy them, it didn't overclock that much. It was a, a substantial, it was, it was a little bit. I mean, I, I, I'm going to show you guys in the benchmarks. It was, it was decent. The memory, I managed to overclock it to only 28, uh, 2800 megahertz. It wouldn't go up a little further than that, but that's that. The rig is built. It looks nice. Let's get into the benchmarks. Now with the benchmarks, I went with four games. I went with PUBG, Tomb Raider, Rainbow Six Siege, and of course, Wolfenstein 2. Now, honestly, the 1060 easily handles all of these four games. The FPS are great for 1080p monitor, for, 10, for 1080p gaming. Ever since PUBG got released from its beta stage, it's been running silky smooth. This scene is the most intense scene. When you're coming out the... A plane when you're diving full speed a bunch of things are being rendered it's easily easily handling the fps hopefully later on once the drivers improve you'll only get better performance with tomb raider rise of the tomb raider again the synthetic benchmark is keeping the game well with 1080p i did manage to get 86 fps as my overall score a title that he's really really eager to play a new one is we have rainbow six siege now this game honestly it was it was awesome for the average the average was 87 fps now i hope it's a title that him and I both played later on because this game honestly is just super smooth and it's the card easily handles it. Now the last title that I have is Wolfenstein 2. This is my personally favorite game. Now this game, I ran this quick scene. Now we averaged within the 60 FPS. This honestly, and the settings, all of these settings were on the highest point. So in this game, I think it's Uber or something else, which was the highest setting. This game took it easily without no problems. The 1060 Strix, again, it's just, and, and I believe this is even an AMD optimized game, not a Nvidia optimized game. And it really, really ran it super smooth. And now, for, honestly, this for the, for the last part, this is the most, I guess you could say the important part. For a Cine bench. Now, my score at, at the end, my score was 1283, which is really, really good. Now, keep in mind, like I said, I did overclock it to 3.9 gigs. Well, that's that, guys. Leave some comments below. Tell me what you guys think. What you guys think about the PC that I built for and what I could have done better. Leave a like, subscribe, guys, and as always, keep a kosher tech. Peace.